All right, Alex here. Welcome to Infrastructure Talks. Today, we're going to skip all the marketing fluff and get right into the technical weeds on a new player in the cloud space. They're making some pretty big promises. And you know what we do here? We're going to put it under the microscope and see if it actually holds up for engineers like us, the ones actually doing the work. So let me ask you something. What did your cloud bill look like last month? Yeah, that number. The one that always seems to go up, never down. It's a massive headache for the whole industry, right? It feels like every great new idea ends up in a budget meeting. Well, what if there was a different way? There's this new open source project, YubaCloud, and they're making a really bold claim. They say you can run an AWS-like cloud, but on bare metal and for just a fraction of the cost. So yeah, let's dig into that and figure out what it actually means in practice. And they are not messing around with this claim. They're putting a number on it, three times cheaper. We're talking their core stuff, you know, VMs and managed Postgres for a third of the price of what you'd pay AWS for something similar. A number like that, you got to pay attention. OK, so what is this thing really? The 3x cheaper part is obviously the big hook. But to get a real feel for where it fits, we have to look at their whole philosophy. They've got this tagline, Linux for the cloud. That's a big statement. So let's break it down. So at its core, YubiCloud is an open source IaaS platform. Basically, it's a layer of software that you install on bare metal servers. You could use your own, but more likely you'd use it on top of something affordable like Hetzner. It takes that raw hardware and turns it into a real unified private cloud. And that Linux analogy they use, it's really important to get their mindset. This isn't just about saving money. It's a whole philosophy. They're trying to do for the cloud what Linux did for operating systems, create an open, transparent, and totally portable alternative to the big proprietary players. And this slide really spells out their mission. Yeah, cost is a big part of it, but it's deeper than that. The real trick they're trying to pull off is to give you back control and portability, things you lose with the big clouds, without giving up the convenience of a modern cloud API. It's a direct shot at vendor lock-in. Okay, so that's the what and the why. Now for the part that really matters to engineers like us, the how. Let's pop the hood and see what's actually running under there, the tech stack, the architecture. So the good news is they're not trying to reinvent everything from scratch. They're building on top of solid, proven open source projects. So if you look at their compute, they're using cloud hypervisor with KVM, that's your EC2 equivalent. For virtual networking, they're using IPsec and NF tables to give you that VPC-like experience. And for block storage, their EBS equivalent is built on SPDK, the Storage Performance Development Kit, which is known for being super high performance. But of course, none of this matters if you can't automate it. For any of us working in DevOps, this is just a non-starter, right? Infrastructure as code is everything. If I can't write a Terraform file for it, it might as well not exist. So what's their story on that front? Well, thankfully, they seem to get it. They have a full-featured Terraform provider, which, let's be honest, is absolute table stakes today. They've also built in some key security stuff like attribute-based access control, plus encryption at rest and in transit. And you can tell they're thinking about modern dev workflows with their integrations for GitHub Actions and a tool like Kamal. All right, so we know what it is. We know how it's built. Now, the big question. Where does it actually fit? Look, we're not searching for an AWS killer here. That's not a realistic conversation. The goal is to figure out the specific niche that YubiCloud is trying to own. And to do that, we have to compare it to the other players. So first up, against the hyperscalers. The whole thing here boils down to a trade-off. With YubiCloud, you get the core IaaS primitives, compute, storage, networking, and it's cheap and portable. With AWS or GCP, you're paying a big premium for that massive, rich ecosystem of PaaS services. We're talking about things like Lambda, RDS, BigQuery, all that good stuff. YubiCloud isn't even trying to compete with that entire ecosystem. That's not the game they're playing. Okay, so then you might ask, why not just go rent some cheap servers from Hetzner and do it myself? And the answer is the software layer. That's the whole value add of YubiCloud. It takes that pile of raw servers and turns it into an actual cloud. It gives you the API, the automation, the virtual networking, all the stuff you'd have to spend months building and maintaining yourself. And what about OpenStack? That's the other big name in open source cloud, right? Well, the key difference here is simplicity. 
I mean, OpenStack is notorious for its complexity. It's this massive, sprawling beast that people lovingly call consultantware because you practically need a team of experts just to run it. UbiCloud is coming at this from the opposite direction. It's opinionated, developer-focused, and designed to be simple. They even have a managed offering to get you going in minutes. Okay, we've covered the tech, we've covered the competitive landscape. Let's get down to brass tacks. Who should actually be using this? What are the perfect use cases? The sweet spot seems pretty clear. Obviously, any startup watching their cash flow is a good candidate. But the real killer use case? Ephemeral workloads, especially CICD. They're talking about a 10 times cost reduction for self-hosting your GitHub Actions runners. That's huge. Beyond that, it's a great fit if you need data sovereignty or you're building out a private cloud for security reasons. And of course, if you're using a tool like Kamal, it completes that fully open source deployment store. And this isn't just a hypothetical. I love this quote from the CTO of Felt, Ken Durek. He said, their biggest question was just, what's the catch? They kept looking for the hidden downside, but he says there wasn't one. They just moved their CI over, got faster builds on newer CPUs, and their costs plummeted. You can't ask for better proof than not for a use case. But let's be real, it's definitely not for everyone. If your application is deeply, and I mean deeply, woven into a hyperscaler's ecosystem, you're using DynamoDB, SQS, Lambda, all that stuff, then moving to UbiCloud would be a monumental rewrite. It's just not practical. And we have to call out a major technical limitation right now. The block storage isn't replicated. So for any stateful service where you absolutely cannot lose data, this isn't the right solution today. Okay, so let's tie this all together. What's the final pragmatic verdict on UbiCloud? right here, right now. So here's the bottom line, the pros and cons. On the pro side, you've got serious cost savings, the freedom that comes with open source and portability, and it's way simpler than something like OpenStack. The cons are pretty much what you'd expect for a project at this stage. The service ecosystem is very limited compared to AWS, the community is smaller, and that lack of replicated block storage is a big one. So what's my final take? I think UbiCloud is a really promising player precisely because it isn't trying to be everything to everyone. It's not trying to boil the ocean. It's being smart, targeting a very specific gap in the market for people who need simple, cheap, portable IAS and who don't need or want to pay for that entire massive suite of hyperscaler services. And that brings it back to you. After hearing all this, think about your own stack. Where could something like this actually fit in? What's the first workload that pops into your head? Is it that crazy expensive CI CD pipeline? Maybe you're staging in dev environments? I'd genuinely love to know what you think. Thanks for joining me.